What's going on, everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Real Lineman Dynasty here on NCAA 14, featuring that college football revamp, of course. And we got a great episode in store for you guys here, man. As you can already see, we got a little bit of a custom coach checkout for you guys here, as well as some rivalry game action with Coach Royal of the Troy Trojans, man. So it should be a great episode in store as we'll go ahead and get things officially underway. Checking in on Coach Justin Jones and the Hawaii Warriors taking on a top 25 team, the USC Trojans. Now, USC's got themselves a squad. They went to the national championship game two years ago, and they are still ranked in that top 25, ranked number 20 in the nation. So it's going to be a pretty difficult task for the Trojans to deal, or not for the Trojans, but for the, this Hawaii football team, which really has struggled so far this year in the new look Pac-12, as only up seven, down seven to nothing, but... Throwing a perfect throw over the middle to Brian Parker. And that's going to be a really easy touchdown. Thomas Sykes, who started in that national championship game two years ago. He's already got two touchdowns in this one. And just slicing apart this Hawaii defense. A defense that has to go through a revamping, of course. You know, like this is not going to be uh, something that's going to be accomplished in year one. Justin Jones, hopefully this administration stays patient with him. But right now, man, it's just, it's getting ugly out here, man. USC already up 21 to nothing. And not even through the first half yet. So it's not been a good look. As Sykes has now have four touchdowns. Yes, four touchdowns in the first half. It's been unstoppable. But Hawaii, they did have a chance to get up on the board, but something really interesting happens here. They end up faking the field goal, and not only do they not get it, but they end up throwing an interception. It's just one of the most head-scratching things I have ever seen, and Hawaii will end up down 28 to nothing at the half. When that second half comes around, things did not get any better in this one. The third turnover of the day for the Rainbow Warriors, man. And now Hawaii or USC takes back over as Thomas Sykes continues to just slice and dice as they have another huge game down the middle of the field. This time to Nate Finley, who has nine catches in this one, nine for 158. Is now first and 10, Sykes. Going to look and scan the defense. Has some time and finds Oliver Johnson in the end zone. And it's 35 to nothing. It's going to be a rough one for Hawaii. As I don't think they're going to pull the upset victory. And things just keep getting worse. Like how does that receiver not come down and make that catch? Just completely blows my mind. And so that 35 nothing lead. Could very well continue to get bigger as a throw down the sideline to Oliver Johnson. That goes for 26. But USC might be able to get off the field as, oh, that's almost intercepted. So USC, they, you know, a little bit of a moral victory at this point. I don't think anyone's expecting Hawaii to win this one. But you're at least stumping them later in this game. With a, uh, you know, with the starter still out on the field. But, you know, it's just, this is just how it was. This was how the cookie crumbles. 45 to nothing. And Hawaii with one last chance to, you know, maybe make things a little bit better. And, yeah, it, it, it's been that kind of day. Not a pig six, but it was that kind of day all day long. And you can't even blame this on the quarterback. I mean, the receiver needs to come down and make that catch. I'm surprised they don't challenge it. But Thomas Sykes, man, ends up throwing seven touchdown passes in this ball game. And Hawaii just never stood a chance. Just coming out completely uninspired. Losing 59 to nothing. What a tough break for this program, man.
But we jump into this episode, man. Jumping into the main piece here. We are taking on our rivals, South Alabama. Now, South Alabama is a special rivalry of ours because it is not just any old rivalry game. Oh, no. It is the one and only battle of for the belt between us and Southern Alabama. Yo, a little bit of bragging rights within the state, man. So we're trying to come out here, set a tone. Now, South Alabama, they have not won a single game yet this season. They're 0-4. Um, they are an independent team just like us. Uh, they're a B-minus overall offense with a C-plus defense. We got a B-plus offense and a B-minus defense. And, but we are now ranked in the top 25, though. So we definitely have a target on our back. And you never know what can happen in these rivalry games. Uh, these rivalry games can get a little bit uh, testy at times. And this is also a team that has, uh, they've lost close games. Uh, three of their four games, they lost by a field goal or one possession or less. So we got to come out here. We got to set a tone. And we got to come out here so that we can be four and one and move up those poles. But yeah, man, I'll see you on the field. See if we can take care of things against our hated rivals. So we jump into the very first possession of the Battle of the Belt as we officially get things underway as the Southern Alabama Jaguars, despite the fact that they have not won a single game yet this season, they are coming out firing on those cylinders. Up 7 nothing early, but... Hey man, our offense is built a little different this year. As we will go ahead and see our offense go to work. Second and short inside the red zone. As Ryan Fisher is going to scramble. Nowhere to go with it until the last second. Finds Travis Setzer on the run. And it's a 14-yard gain that sets up a goal line situation. As the backup Steve Jordan comes in and... Offensive line, give it credit where credit is due. They win the edge, and Steve Jordan able to run into the end zone without even being touched. And so we will knot it up against the Jaguars, all tied up at seven apiece. As now we start our next drive of the game. This time, South Alabama not scoring, as we'll throw over the middle to Kendavious Richardson for a gain of 17. Is now third and short coming. Going to set up the play action bubble. And what's been really surprising, at least to me, traditionally when I've ran this play, it usually does not go for very much success. But surprisingly, at least here in the first few episodes of this series, it's actually been working extremely well so far. As we got a first down out of that, and we get a first down off the slam pattern and thrown perfectly to where Contavious Richardson gets that yards after the catch and now back in the red zone we call a halfback draw we get to the outside with it and Travis Seltzer gets it into the end zone baby let's go man great run by Travis Seltzer and we already got 14 on the board without even leaving the first quarter we've been known to score a lot of points here early on in the season so we'll see if we can keep that up. We gotta live up to that reputation. Especially because I'm trying to set a tone, set a message to our hated rivals within the state of Alabama. This is now third and short coming. We set up another screen to the left hand side. Davis Richardson does manage to get himself out into open space. And gets it for a gain of seven. As we go into another read option, Fisher makes a run. Oh, can we get that last block? Oh, my goodness. If we got that last block, dude, that would have been a touchdown. But still third and four coming as we got a bunch set to the right. Four wide set in total as we're going to try to throw for it here. But we run out of time. Nobody gets open. But our head coach, man, our head coach wants us to be aggressive. So, 4th and 10, we are actually going to go for it. As we look over the middle, we have an open man. And not only is it a first down, but it's going to be a touchdown. Furman Bennett just called the right play at the right time. The middle was wide, but naked open. And Ryan Fisher 
was able to find the perfect crease. So free drives for your Troy Trojans in this rivalry game. And we have already have three touchdowns to show for it. And this will definitely help us out. This is going to be actually a face mask called on the defense. So not only do we pick up the first down, we will pick up 15 more yards out of it. Definitely love to see that. We started this drive inside the five. So we had a lot of work that needed to be done if we even wanted to go ahead and get some points on the board as McDaniels get loose. Almost gets away from that last man. But a great play by Dejon McDaniels following the blocks. And now it's first and ten in the red zone. Can we finish? Looking to the right hand side. And Dejon McDaniels gets himself open once again. And I'm trying to see if we can go ahead and finish. One of the best drives that we've had in this series, and we do. Travis Setzer with the two-yard touchdown run. That was a 95-plus yard touch, touchdown drive. Best drive in the series so far. We go up by two touchdowns. And now, offense back out on the field. South Alabama has been struggling to get points on the board. Is this where we start to pull away? 30 seconds left here in the first half. We still got a timeout. Got to attack either get that first down or get out of bounds. Either way, that will help us save some clock. As we're down to the last 20 seconds here of this first half, a chance to maybe get into the end zone. And sure enough, we do. Travis Sanders with a reception down the middle of the field for a 15-yard touchdown. Let's go, man. 35 points in the first half. That's setting a tone against your rival. We are well on pace for yet another 50 burger. We already have two, I believe two such 50 burgers if I'm not mistaken. You can let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong, but I mean, offensively, I mean, Royal just has the perfect playbook for this talent on this offense. Taking advantage of the great wide receivers that we got as we try to throw it over the middle. Dangerous throw. And after it gets tipped up into the air, it gets intercepted. And that actually does end up being the first turnover of the game for either team. And it was one of those throws where, you know, technically Sanders could have caught it. But, you know, not a necessarily. It was definitely an ill-advised throw. So we'll try again here um, after we had the interception. South Alabama cannot take advantage of it. So it still remains a free possession game despite the fact that we did turn the ball over. And maybe we just got to get that run game going a little bit more as Travis Setzer finds an open crease gain of 11. And it sets up second and short as Fisher drops back in the pocket. He's going to look to his left. No one really going with him. No spy or anything like that. He's just going to slide down and take the easy yardage. That's kind of what we need Ryan Fisher to do. We know he's capable of pushing the ball downfield for us. But if we want to be a national contender someday, you know, we need quarterbacks like Ryan Fisher, to, you know, to make good decisions. That's really what it barrels down to. If the quarterback can make good decisions, you know, keep it under 10 interceptions in a season... That's going to really help this team moving forward. And speaking of points, oh, we almost managed to get it in there. <laughs> Quick pause there. But Coach decides to settle for a field goal. I was actually really surprised by that simply because, you know, you know, you got to let us work. You know, I'm a peacock. You got to let me fly with this offense, you know. And, you know, less than one yard from the end zone, you don't let me go for it? That's crazy, man. But we still have a 38-14 to 14 lead, so I guess can't necessarily complain too terribly much. As Travis Sanders does pick up a gain of 14 there. So now first and 10 coming up here as Fisher gets set up under center. He's going to look around a little bit, and we threw it. I was hoping Sanders would have continued running his round so that we can get it behind that linebacker. He actually stops, and Mike Stanley gets an easy interception. It's the second interception of the game for Ryan Fisher. 
And this, that, that's what I'm talking about, man. We have not had a game yet where we've actually went about um, not turning the ball over. We, we have at least one turnover every single game so far. And obviously that's uh, not going to be broken anytime soon, uh, seeing as we turn the ball over here as well as Mike Stanford gets us a third time. Getting that big lead in the first half. We just been sloppy here in the second half. Only coming out with a field goal. Three turnovers to show for it. Not how I wanted to come out here in the second half locker room. Forget that the ball has... It might not even be that slippery even though it's raining outside. We're just making dumb decisions. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. It, it's just been, you know, that kind of thing for us over the course of the season. And that is an Achilles heel that we will need to address before we start that huge row straight. Remember, we got five games in a row to end the season that are all going to be on the road. Turn the ball over does not win games especially on the road but for now i think we'll be all right you know what i'm saying like we're up by three touchdowns this will probably make it four and it certainly does travis sanders in the end zone baby let's go man brian fisher may be a gunslinger but free touchdowns is free touchdowns we are certainly living in the Jameis winston experience we might have the very first time like a 30 30 kind of season where the dude ends up throwing like 30 plus touchdowns and also 30 plus interceptions. It could certainly go that way. As now we're at a point where our backups are now in the game. The head coach made that decision to put in those backups. So we'll take a little bit of a peek at Willie Lewis here. He's our backup. Also a senior red shirt to see what he's capable of. And so far, pretty smooth drive, man. Two first downs off of his two throws. Do like to see that. We'll see if we can get this third down, though. Third and short. We have been really good on third down conversions. 9 for 12 on the day as we miss our receiver. Wow. Man, that could have been an easy first down right there. We had actually multiple receivers open. We just straight up missed them, man. That's not what I want to see. But fourth and six, we will end up picking that up. Getting into the red zone as well as Sherrard Parker. Gets his uh, very first catch of the day. Now in the red zone again, looking for that 50 burger. And I don't know how. That was, I was supposed to go to that running back, Steve Jordan. That's who I was trying to throw it to. It was well off target. But sometimes it's a little bit better to be lucky than it is to be good, right? It leads to another touchdown. And we will get that 50 burger on the board. Taking care of business against South Alabama. For the battle of the belt and we win this one 52 to 17 should be the kind of performance that does keep us within the top 25 we'll see how high we climb so there it is man we pull off yet another 50 burger man that makes it three 50 burgers in a row man this offense Maurice Royal is doing something special with it. He's going to be a big-time coach someday, man. But we win the battle for the belt, winning convincingly. We kind of we got a little sloppy in that second half. I'm not really a huge fan of that. We could have put a lot more up on the board. But, I mean, Fisher, you know, gunswinger, man. I think that's really the best way to describe him, right? Three touchdowns, but three interceptions in that second half. Do we'll have to work on that because we aren't always going to be blowing out these teams man we are going to eventually play against better teams uh william lewis was solid in the drive that he showed up on five for ten for 64 uh running game got the running game going a lot more if that was what i wanted to do and that's what we did man 15 for 110 two touchdowns steve jordan also found the end zone as well nine for 22 in this game and then for the receivers, I mean, the duo of Contavious Richardson and Dejon McDaniels really is one of the best duos in college football. At least an underrated duo. Look for both of them to be in the NFL someday. 8 for 92 and 688. But it was really Travis Sanders' day. He was really special in this one. 6 for 104 with a couple of touchdowns. And then Furman Bennett also ended up catching a touchdown today. He ends up with a couple of catches going for a grand total of 37 yards. So with that impressive victory over South Alabama, we do jump a little bit higher into the rankings. We're now number 22 in the nation. And 
We're taking on a Boise State squad next episode that has fallen off quite a bit, you know, in this Dynasty universe, man. They are one and three, but we cannot take Boise State for granted. I always have to believe that anybody could beat anybody on any given day, and I have found that out the hard way before. So I want to come out there next episode and take care of business. But I will leave that for the next time, though. And if you enjoyed today's content, I need you guys to do me a favor. Smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you have to be brand new as well. This is John Chick Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.